work better now. I'm taking the time to wear it. All right. Do long, slow, deep breathing. Just like meditation, we want to breathe from our belly. So don't breathe up here into your chest. Let the diaphragm drop. Let the belly expand. You breathe in through the nose. Belly expands. Breathe out through the mouth as the belly contracts. We keep our good posture from this direction and from this direction. All right? Try and stand in this wuji position as long as you can. Keep looking straight ahead. That's going to help your posture. All right? Let's begin, inhale. Oh, we didn't bow in, did we? Sorry, right hand, fist, power, left hand. Fingers together, friendship, tucking the thumb, humility. And welcome, thank you guys for being here. <clears throat> now we can start breathing. Wuji position, inhale the hands up in front of us. And exhale the hands down. Inhale and exhale, inhale, and exhale. Good job, keep looking straight ahead. Inhale, hands to the heart, exhale, push the hands out in front of us. Inhale to the heart, exhale, relax the hands down. Big deep belly breath in, long slow breath out. Inhale to the heart, exhale the hands down. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Good job. Arms over the head next. Inhale to the heart. Exhale, keep looking straight ahead. Hands over the head. Yell go Cardinals if you want to be dangerous. Inhale and exhale. Big deep belly breath in, long slow breath out. Inhale and exhale. I'm not here. Inhale, exhale, inhale and exhale. Next, arms to the side, big deep, belly breath in. Long, slow breath out, fingertips up, feel the stretch in the arms. Inhale to the heart, exhale, relax the hands down. Catch your death of cold, huh? Inhale, <laughs> exhale, inhale, and exhale. One more time, big deep belly breath in. Long, slow breath out. Inhale and exhale. Keep looking straight ahead, arms in the diagonals, inhale to the heart. Left up, right down, nice and slow. Inhale, either left is fine. Exhale, right hand up, left hand down. Inhale. And exhale. Good posture, everybody. Inhale. Nice and slow. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale to the heart. Exhale, relax the hands down. We'll flap the arms like bird wings. Be kind to your shoulders. Inhale. And exhale. Big deep belly breath in. Keep looking straight ahead. Keep that body straight, exhale, relax the hands down. Inhale, and exhale. And lastly, gathering chi, big deep belly breath in, and long, slow breath out. 
Do that two more times. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. There you have it. That's our deep breathing exercises. You might, as a suggestion, you might want to change your glasses away from the sunglasses to regular shades. Helps you see a little bit better, okay? Always a good idea. It's amazing how much I uh, take from our balance or uh, being able to not see. Um, since I had my balance nerve cut, um, I don't walk in dark rooms. Actually, like when I have to get up at the night, in the middle of the night to use the restroom, I have a headlamp at the bed now and I put it on. I use the red light so I don't disturb my wife, but it has enough light that I can see because in dark rooms, I don't do really well yet. That's still something I'm, I'm working on with my balance. Um, but when I can't see, I have trouble. Um, I have trouble with my balance. So, um, and actually they have found out like, um, I, like I said, I do talks on fall prevention uh, for church groups and that type of stuff. Um, having your eyes checked every year is very important because your prescription can change. And if you can't see what's in front of you, it's hard to balance yourself. So make sure your eyes have been checked every year, okay? It's gonna help you immensely with your balance, okay? All right, let's do our warm-up exercises. From the Wuji position, feet shoulder hip distance apart, nice gentle bend in the knees. Sometimes you'll see me do this like I'm in a bouncy house just to make sure my knees are bent. Tuck in the pelvis, head is lifted by the silk thread. We're gonna start with the chin tuck. Um, you feel that stretch right in the back of the neck, okay? Float the hands up in front of us. Keep the chin level, tuck in the chin, looking straight ahead. Hands come out, chin gently floats up. Sink the chin to the chest without leaning forward. Again, float the hands up in front of us. Hands to the chest, tucking in the chin, looking straight ahead. Hands come out, chin gently floats up. And sink the chin to the chest. One more time, you guys are doing wonderful. Float the hands up in front of us. Tuck in that chin, keep looking straight ahead. Hands come out, the chin gently floats up and sink the chin down to the chest. Beautiful. Next neck exercise, we're looking side to side. Um, make sure you keep the hand below the level of your shoulder, focus on the neck going from side to side, looking over one shoulder and then the other shoulder. All right, from prayer hand position, Tai Chi ball, right hand on top. Watch the left hand going over the left shoulder, looking left, pushing down right. And come back to center. Try and keep that hand below the shoulder if you can. Tai Chi ball, left hand on top. Watch the right hand going over the right shoulder, look right, push down left. Turn that neck, feel that stretch. Come back to center. Tai Chi ball, right hand on top. Watch the left hand going over the left shoulder, looking left, pushing down right. Turn the neck, feel the stretch. Come back to center. Tai Chi ball, left hand on top. Watch the right hand going over the right shoulder. Turn the neck, looking over your shoulder. Feel the stretch. And come back to center. One more time, Tai Chi ball, right hand on top, left hand, left shoulder, looking left, pushing down right. Come back to center, come back to prayer hands. Tai Chi ball, left hand on top. Watch the right hand going over the right shoulder, looking right, pushing down left. And then come back to center, come back to prayer hands and relax the hands down. Excellent. So on that exercise, let's do it once just without the hands, just with our neck. The primary part of this exercise is the neck. When we add the hands, we start to stimulate the brain a little bit, um, but we primarily want to work the neck. Um, and what we're trying to train the body is that we're in this wuji position. We can look over one shoulder, 
look over the other shoulder and the only thing I'm moving is my head. So I'm able to keep my balance, right? I'm not leaning. So make sure that you don't lean as you do this. I'm not tilting my head this way. I'm tilting my head this way. I'm just rotating at the base of the spine, okay? So let's try it without the hands, just the neck. Take and look over your left shoulder. Look at that wall in your left side. And come back to center. Then look over your right shoulder. Feel the stretch in your neck. Not shifting weight, good job. And come back to center. Let's do that again. Look over your left shoulder. Feel the stretch in your neck. And come back to center. And look over your right shoulder. Nice, gentle stretch, not shifting the weight. Good job, beautiful. So at this point, let's try adding the hands for just one time. The goal is to do exactly the same thing. Everybody was doing a great job uh, to do the same thing while involving the hands, all right? So Tai Chi ball, right hand is on top. Look over your left shoulder, bring your left hand with you. Keep the head nice and straight and come back to center. Good job. Tai Chi ball left hand on top. Watch the right hand going over the right shoulder, not shifting weight. Look over that right shoulder and come back to center. Good job. Relax the hands down. And that's exactly the way you want to do that exercise. So when you're looking to the side, I'm not doing, I'm not leaning the head. I'm not shifting the weight. I'm not turning the shoulders. I'm just looking over one shoulder and looking over the other one. Okay. The chin tuck. Um, a, <laughs> a good way. I'm glad you brought that up. That's a great question. So his question was the chin tuck. He has a little trouble tucking in the chin and keeping the head level. Uh, one of the things you can do is stare right at the logo or, or something right at eye level. Stare at that as you tuck in the chin. As long as you don't do the bifocal look, right? Uh, don't do the bifocal look. You got it. You got it. It's just a little bit. Oh, you, usually you feel that in the back of your neck. So, um, so just keep working with it. But people have found, and actually one gentleman named Austin, a couple of you know Austin, um, he, is, he has Parkinson's disease. He found out his balance was better when he would tuck in his chin like he would do the uh, heel kick and he found out if he tucked in his chin, it did better with his balance, okay? Head forward, yeah. It's hard to do. Well, a lot of things that are good in life for you are hard to do, aren't they? <laughs> Uh, you are exactly right, though. A lot of people with Parkinson's have a head forward um, posture, and that's what we're trying to do. That chin tuck straightens you up. So like looking at it from the side, instead of your head being forward like this, you tuck in that chin and you keep this good straight line. And that's, that's one of the things I talk about with posture all the time, is trying to keep that head forward. You, so just keep working on it. Um, you're doing really well, so. Uh, well, you know, I've been doing Tai Chi for 20 years now, and I still have a lot to learn. Uh, I still have just tons to learn about it. Um, and you, you, you can look, it's easy to look at and see what you don't do, but look at it and see what you can do. Um, and I, I even do that like with my surgery, like I, you know, I have some bad days as I'm recovering from my surgery. Um, but I look and see where I'm at compared to where I was and realize how blessed I really am. Um, so that's an easy way to do it is, is you know, take, take the, look at the other side, look at the half full glass and see how, how far you've come. Okay. And look at all the things, you know, tucking in the chin. You didn't know about that before you took class, did you? <laughs> all right. Let's do shoulder exercises from the Wuji position. Bring the shoulders back, then up, then forward without leaning forward and down. <laughs> shoulders back, up, forward without leaning forward and down. Keep looking straight ahead. You can 
practice that chin tuck with this. Shoulders back. Up, forward, looking forward, and down. Now reverse. Shoulders forward, then up, then back, and down. Shoulders forward, up, back, and down. One more time. Shoulders forward, up, back, and down. Excellent. Good job, everybody. I usually have to readjust my mic after that one. All right. Gathering chi, reaching for infinity. Imagine someone's pulling on your wrist. So gently reaching out, reaching up. And exhale, relax the hands down. Two more times, gently reaching out, reaching up. And exhale, relax the hands down. Nice and gentle. So when your hands are reaching over your head, you don't want to come up on your toes and get lighter on your feet. Instead, when your hands come up, push down on your feet simultaneously. That's going to help stabilize you. Okay? So, reaching out, reaching up, push down on the feet. See how much more stable you feel? Relax the hands down. Let's try that one one more time. Gently reaching out, reaching up, push down on the feet. And exhale, relax the hands down. Beautiful. Good job. More specifically, when you push down on the feet, push down on the balls of your feet, uh, just behind the toes, right on the balls of your feet. So as you're reaching up, kind of push down on the balls of your feet. So you imagine that like right here, pushing down on the floor. That's going to help stabilize you. Okay? All right. Touching heaven and earth, a way to open up our body vertically. Same thing, push down on the feet. Get that good root, okay? Prayer hand position. Left hand up, right hand down, stretching the spine. Float the head towards the ceiling. And come back to center. Keep your good posture. Stay nice and straight. Right hand up, left hand down, gently stretching the spine. Good job. Come back to center. Left hand up, right hand down, gently stretching the spine. Come back to center. Right hand up, left hand down, gently stretching the spine. And come back to center. Same thing, root those feet to the ground. Left hand up, right hand down, gently stretching the spine. Come back to center. Right hand up, left hand down, again, gently stretching that spine. And come back to center, come back to prayer hands, relax the hands down. I got to get a drink of water real fast. Not that it's hot outside or anything like that. Oh, don't lean like that. <laughs> Here, we'll do that so you don't have to lean, okay? <laughs> All right. Next exercise, uh, carrying the ball side to side, okay? Um, we're going to try and not move our hips and just move our upper body, all right? So we start in the Wuji position, prayer hand position. Tai Chi ball, left hand is on top, gently turn to the left. Turning the ball over, right hand is on top, and gently turn to the right. Stay on the right side, turn the ball over, left hand's on top, gently turn to the left. Turning the ball over, right hands on top, gently turn to the right. Turn the ball over, left hands on top. Stand up nice and straight and tall. There you go. Turn to the left. Stay on the left as you turn the ball over, or gently turn to the right. And then turn the ball over, come back to center, and relax the hands down. Beautiful. All right. Shake those legs loose. Let's do one more exercise, and then we'll have a seat and do some from the chair. Okay? All right. Be careful with that leaning, okay? I'm not trying to single you out. I, it's actually uh, it's a good warning to everybody. When If you need to get something, leaning like this is a really bad way to do it. You can walk up to it and pick it up. Much safer for you. 
when you're leaning like this, if your leg uh, gives out, you'll pitch forward and fancy, face plant in the ground, okay? We don't want that to happen. And the one thing, well, I'll have your attention just really quick. I've seen, I, I haven't seen anybody here do this yet because um, I'll call you out on it if you do it. Um, but when you want to sit down in the chair, some people with Parkinson's have come about this far and they go like this, and then they walk towards the chair. It's really, really bad idea. Really bad idea. And there's numerous people that have done this, and, and as they start leaning forward, they miss the chair and they hit their head on the chair. Oh, really? <laughs> so that's why I talk about posture so much. Um, so instead, you want to walk up to the chair, then hold on to the chair and do what you need to do. But don't lean towards that chair. That's going to get you in trouble. Okay? Yeah. You're right. Well, see, and that goes back to eyesight, too. Like a test a neurologist will give you, I don't know if you guys have had this, my neurosurgeon did this to me after my surgery, he'll hold up his finger and tell me to touch my finger and touch his nose. So I'm supposed to do this and, and he takes his finger and he tracks his finger all around. And, and it's, it's not easy to do, but that has to do with your eyesight and knowing where your body is in this three-dimensional three world we live in. And that's part of that whole chair because you think the chair is here when it's over here and you go to lean on it and it's not there um, and you end up falling. So that's why you want to walk up to it and put your hands on it. Um, that's really common with people with Parkinson's disease. So just something to keep in mind, okay? All right, thank you. Um, all right, so we walk nice and straight. When you want your water, you walk up to it and grab it, right? All right, beautiful. All right, leg strengthening exercise, weight shift to the left, right foot, cat stance. All the weights on the left leg. Use your chair if you need to. Tap, right foot to the front, empty. Keep looking straight ahead. Don't look at your feet, feel your feet. Cat stance once again. And right foot to the side. To the side. And back to the cat stance. And right foot behind us. Plenty of space between the feet. And back to cat stance. And back to Wuji. Excellent. Sure, no problem. All right, other side, okay? Weight shift to the right with a bend in the right knee. Left foot, cat stance. Don't look at the feet, stay nice and straight. Tap, left foot to the front. Just because you're on the side doesn't mean I can't see you. <laughs> cat stance. Left foot to the side. To the side. No weight transfer. All your weights right. And then left foot behind us. No weight transfer. Keep plenty of space between your feet. There you go. Can't dance. And back to Uji. I didn't catch the last thing you said. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's not easy, is it? Yeah, exactly. Well, you can glance down, but just don't spend time looking at your feet. Go, wow, I'm really doing a good job. Eh, you're not helping your posture because if you look at yourself from the side, you're doing this. Instead, do this. We're nice and straight. I'm looking straight ahead. And learn to, all those nerves on the bottom of your feet. Put them to good use, right? Okay. Um, that exercise, it just occurred to me, that exercise is kind of like the, the neurologist telling you where you're at in that 3D world. That's kind of the same thing, isn't it? I just thought of that. That's one, one of the benefits of that exercise. Um, any questions about anything we've done so far? Let's have a seat. Let's do some seated Tai Chi.
I had somebody, a friend of mine, lost their water, um, so I sent him a get well card soon. <laughs> get a well card soon, you know? All right. <clears throat> See, you're going to miss those dad jokes next week, aren't you? <laughs> All right. Sitting up nice and straight and tall. Don't use the back of your chair. Sit up on the edge of your chair, feet flat on the floor. 90 degree bend between the upper and the lower leg, so the knee is right over the ankle. Rock forward on the pelvis, head is lifted by the silk thread. Okay? Well, let's do our hip exercise first. I know she took off your cardinal ball cap. <laughs> we'll turn to the right hand side of the room. Knees together. Now, when you're doing this, you want to keep that knee above the heel, okay? So we're not doing this, or this, or even this, or this. Keep your body nice and straight, knee above the heel. That's going to concentrate the stretch between the legs and on the hips, and you'll probably even feel it in the lower back. Uh, some of you with tight lower backs, like myself, will feel that in the lower back, okay? So let's try it once with the leg. Slide the left leg out, keeping the knee above the ankle. So it's a right angle here, not tucked back behind you. And come back to center. Excellent. Don't use your hands, use your body. Prayer hand position. Let's add hands in, work our brain. So leg, slide that leg out and push against the, an imaginary wall on the right hand side. Try and keep that knee above the heel as you do this. Move your chair if you need to. Come back to center. Let's try that again. Push against the imaginary wall on the right. Open up that left leg. And come back to center. Let's do that one more time. We're having so much fun. Push against the right wall. Open up the left leg. If I didn't tell you were having fun, you wouldn't know it, right? And come back to center. Relax the hands down. Beautiful. Shift the weight or shift in your chair to the left hand side of the chair. Knees together. Same thing. We'll just do the leg one time. So open up that leg, keeping the knee above the heel. Good. Nice right angle, right? And back to center. Prior hand position. Push against the imaginary wall on the left and open up the right leg, keeping the knee above the heel. And come back to center. Good job. Open up that right leg. Push against the left wall. And back to center. One more time. Push against the left wall. Open up the right leg. Feel that nice stretch. Keep the head lifted. And come back to center. Relax the hands down. Good job, everybody. Shake those legs loose. Good work, everybody. Pardon me, I gotta get a drink of water. I'm trying to hydrate. It's a hot day out there today. Please make sure that you hydrate, all right? All right. Next tip exercise. <laughs> we're gonna lift the leg up, not using our hands, keeping our back straight so we're not crunching over, we're not leaning back. Try and stay nice and straight. And then we're going to push our foot down. Again, you stay nice and straight. All right? It helps some people to think of when I lift my knee, I lift my head at the same time. That helps keep the back straight and keeps you from curling forward with that head forward position that we talked about. Okay? So, what do, oh, my hands are to my side. Sorry. Uh, left hand, left leg up, hands behind us, keeping the back straight and relax, and then hands in front of us and push down on the left foot, hard as you can. Push, 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 and relax. Two more times, lift the left leg up, hands behind us, and relax. Hands in front of us, push down on the left foot as hard as you can. Push down, push, 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 keep that head lifted. There you go, relax, beautiful. One more time. Left leg up, hands behind us, back is straight, and relax. 
hands in front of us and push down on the left foot hard as you can. Push, 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 and relax. Beautiful. Now the right leg, same thing. Lift that right leg up, hands behind us, and relax. Hands in front of us, push down on the right foot hard as you can. Keep looking straight ahead. Keep that back straight, and relax. Two more times, lift that right leg up, hands are behind us. Good job. Relax. <laughs> hands in front of us, push down on the right foot, hard as you can. Keep looking straight ahead. Push, 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 and relax. Not easy, is it? <laughs> One more time, lift the right leg up. Let's hold this for half an hour. Just kidding. <laughs> and relax. Hands in front of us, push down on the right foot, hard as you can, push, 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 and relax. Beautiful, shake those legs loose. Good job, everybody. <clears throat> All right, moving along. Any questions so far? Okay, it's okay to ask questions, right? All right, so knee exercise, it's kind of a misnomer. There's no muscles in your knees, however, this exercise will build up the muscles above your leg, above your knee and below your knee and help stabilize your knee. So that's why it's called the knee exercise. It's a really good exercise to build up leg strength, okay? So we're gonna do four motions with the leg. First, we lift the leg up. Second, we kick the leg out, heel kick. So the toe is pointing up. Third, we pick the leg back up. We don't forget this one, right? And Fourth, we float the foot to the ground. Don't just drop the foot. We float the foot to the ground, all right? Make sure you don't skip step number three because I see some people lift and kick and go just down again. You actually want to bring the foot back to this position and then let it down. Also, we're going to punch out the opposite hand, okay? All right. Easy peasy, right? I didn't see who said that, so. <laughs> all right. Start with lifting the left leg, kicking out, punching out, right fist, opposite hand. Pick up the left leg and float the foot to the ground. Pick up the right leg, heel kick right, punch out, left fist, opposite hand. Pick up the left leg and float the foot to the ground. Sit up nice and straight and tall. Pick up that left leg, heel kick left, punch out, right fist. Pick up the left leg, you're fine. Float the foot to the ground. Pick up the right leg, heel kick right, punch out the left fist. Pick up the right leg, you got it, you got it. Float the foot to the ground. You had it right the first time. Pick up the left leg, heel kick left, punch out right fist, there you go. Pick up the left leg, float the foot to the ground. Pick up the right leg, heel kick right, punch out left fist. Pick up the right leg, float the foot to the ground. One more time, keep that back nice and straight so we're not doing this and trying to kick, but we're doing this, so I'm looking straight ahead, okay? Pick up that left leg, heel kick left, punch out right fist. Pick up that left leg, float the foot to the ground. Pick up the right leg, heel kick right, punch out, left fist. And pick up the right leg, float that foot to the ground. Beautiful, shake those legs loose. <clears throat> so I asked my daughter for a dictionary and she called me a dinosaur and laughed at me and handed me her iPhone. So, but now the spider's dead. My daughter's really, really mad at me and her iPhone's broke. <laughs> you know, smashing the spider with the iPhone. <laughs> I figured this generation would get that one, so. All right, toe kick is next, four motions. Only difference is we were doing a heel kick, now we're doing a toe kick, pointing the toe forward, okay? All right, sitting up nice and straight and tall. Ready for this? Hands loosely gripped at the belt line, pick up the left leg, Toe kick left, punch out, right fist. Pick up the left leg, float the foot to the ground. Pick up the right leg, toe kick right, punch out, left fist. Pick up the right leg, 
and float the foot to the ground. Pick up the left leg, toe kick left, punch out, right fist. Pick up the left leg, let it float there for a moment. Sl uh, I can't think of the word. Relax it to the ground, pick up the right leg, toe kick right, punch out left fist. Feel like your brain is on vacation already. Pick up the right leg, float the foot to the ground. All right, two more times, sit up nice and straight and tall. Pick up the left leg, toe kick left. Punch out, right fist, left leg, right fist. Pick up the left leg, float the foot to the ground. Sit up nice and straight and tall, there you go. Pick up the right leg, toe kick right, punch out, left fist. Pick up the right leg, float the foot to the ground. One more time. Pick up the left leg, toe kick left, punch out, right fist. Pick up the left leg, float the foot to the ground. Pick up the right leg, toe kick right, punch out, left fist. Look straight ahead. Pick up the right leg and float the foot to the ground. Beautiful. Shake those legs loose. I love it when I say sit up straight, the whole room gets taller. Everybody goes, oh, yeah, that's he's talking to me. <laughs> All right. Any questions on those exercises? That exercise, the one we just did, toe kick, heel kick, it doesn't make a difference. You can vary it if you want to, um, but that's one of the best exercises you can do for your legs. If you feel your legs are not as strong as you want them to be, try to do that exercise at least once a day, all right? It doesn't take very long. Do it three times, three repetitions once a day. You'll be amazed at how much stronger you'll start to feel in a week and in two weeks and in three weeks. If you really want to help yourself, try three times a day, three repetitions each time. Um, and it's easy to do because you get fed three times a day, right? So just push back from the table and do the heel kick three times before you get up. What you'll notice is like getting out of a chair, sometimes you have to like put our hands here and uh, struggle, get out of the chair. When your legs get stronger, you'll be able to just stand up from the chair and sit back down nice and smooth. Um, that's the other way was when you kind of fall back in your chair. That's how you know your legs are starting to get weak, right? So you can try and just do a squat as you get into the chair. Just make sure the chair is behind you, okay? All right. Any questions about that? Let's stand up. Let's do our ankle exercises. If you need to stay seated, go ahead and do it. <clears throat> I like to work on our balance also. <coughs> one pipe is for breathing and one's for liquid, right? And food. <coughs> Got to remember that. All right. What did we say about leaning? <laughs> All right. Uh, ankle exercise, weight shift to the right, left foot, touch heel, and then toe. Hold on to your chair, heel. And toe, don't look at your feet. Heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe. Try and leave more space in between your feet. Heel and toe, beautiful. Shift weight to the left with a bend in the left knee. Right foot, touch heel and toe. Heel and toe. Heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, and toe, and back to center. You look pretty casual back there doing that one. You didn't look that way when we first did that exercise. When we first did that exercise, you were holding onto the chair with a death grip, and now he's like, yeah, whatever. Heel, toe, heel, toe. What's next? <laughs> All right. Second Ankle exercise, weight shift to the right, left foot, touch little toe, and big toe. Don't put any weight on the foot. All your weight's on the right. Little toe, big toe, outside, inside, little toe, and big toe. And come back to center. Keep that wide stance. Don't put any weight on the leg that's doing the exercise, all right? So all my weight is on my left with my right foot, touch heel, or I'm sorry, little toe, big toe. 
<clears throat> outside of the foot, inside of the foot. Little toe, big toe, outside and inside and come back to center. Beautiful. All right. Um, let's do this. If you stand in the Wuji position, just stand for a moment, feet shoulder hip distance apart, bend in the knees, tuck in the tailbone, head is lifted by the silk thread. Now, I want you to try and feel your feet. So I know I'm in a room full of guys, tell them to feel their feet. And stuff. Um, but you need to be in touch with your feet, all right? Um, and you need to find, um, are you leaning more on the toes? Or are you leaning more on the heels? Are you leaning more on the outside or leaning more on the inside? You need to be in touch with your feet and listen to what your feet are telling you. Um, now, I want everyone to be careful when we do this. So hold on to your chairs if you need to, but lean forward a little bit and feel how your feet, feel how the toes are on the ground. Also notice when you're doing this, your thighs get tight, your stomach gets tight as you lean forward. Now come back to a neutral position, come off those toes. Um, feel how the whole body starts to get tight as you do that. That's your body's response. Your body is going, ah, you're not quite as balanced as we thought. So uh, here's another one. I want everyone to hold on to their chair, okay? Lean backwards slightly and feel how, feel on your feet, feel how your heels start digging into the ground. You'll also notice your hamstrings get tight, your, your bottom gets tight in your back starts to tighten up also as you start to go backwards. Go ahead and come back to a neutral position again. And so, <clears throat> What we're, what we're doing here is you try and go, okay, too far forward, too far backwards, and start rocking back and forth between the feet until you feel that the balls of your feet, that fleshy part right behind your toes, should feel rooted to the ground. That's the part of the foot you want to be on the ground. But we need to listen to our feet to understand that, right? So let's do something else. <clears throat> go ahead and lean to your left side and feel how that does on your foot. Feel, how, feel where your foot is. Everybody's a little different on this one, I've found. Come back to center. Now, compare that. Now shift your weight to your left. Notice my body is staying straight, but I have the weight on the left foot. Feel the left foot being solid. Stay nice and straight. Stay nice and straight. But feel how the foot is solid on the ground. And come back to center. So you want that solid feeling. Um, now, when I stand in this Wuji position, I have a little bit more weight, like 5% more weight on the outside of my foot than the inside of my foot. And the reason for that is if I put weight on the inside of my foot, my knees start coming together. Now, see how my legs are no longer in an arch? They're kind of, they're kind of wonky, <laughs> right? But between my ankle and my knee, it bends in and then it comes up to my hip, so it kind of looks concave, right? If I stand like this, put a little bit more weight to the outside of the foot, just like I said, 5%, maybe 10%. Now, see how my legs start to form an arch? This is really stable. We're from St. Louis. We know what an arch does, right? We've known since 1964 how stable an arch is, right? So, which who builds an arch in a tornado zone, right? But we did it and it's still there. That exemplifies how strong an arch is. So my legs resemble this arch. So when I stand in the Wuji position, I'm going forward, backwards. I find that neutrality. That bouncing will help with this also because you can, if, if your weight is like on your heels and you start bouncing, you'll feel all the weight on your heels and go, oh, I'm leaning backwards, aren't I? So you kind of bounce a little bit and then you make sure your weight's on the outside of your legs and your legs form an arch, and this is, becomes really stable, okay? I'm really hard to push over a list. Like someone can try and push me. I used to do it with my girls, uh, that they would try and push me when I was in this position to see if they could knock daddy over. It was a fun game for them. It was a good, good experience for me also. So this arch, when we lift our hands above our head, we want to keep this arch to keep ourselves stable, okay? So... Forward and backwards, side to side, feel that stability, and learn where your stability, excuse me, learn where your stability is, okay?
That's a really good homework assignment. And you can stand like this when you're watching TV. You can go, yeah, I'm gonna stand up, practice this a little bit. This is good for your legs. Uh, it's good for your body. It's good for your brain, listening to your feet, okay? All right, not as uh, cool in here now, is it? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Mm hmm Good. Okay, that could be. That arch support would give you the stability you needed. Good. Sure. Yeah, and it makes a difference in how long you can do something during the day also, doesn't it? Because before the arch supports, I'm guessing that around like four o'clock in the afternoon, your feet started hurting you and you'd end up sitting down and now you have the arch supports and you can exercise more and do more things now too. Yeah, it's amazing. Our feet are meant to take all of our body weight um, and everybody here is thin, so you don't have to worry about being overweight. Uh, but our feet are meant to support our body weight, um, but it takes good arch support to do that. So, um, and I'll tell you one more thing, then we'll do our meditation, our mindfulness. Um, and you can sit down if you want. Um, so if this is my foot with my toes and think of this as the ball of my foot, um, there is one pressure point with all the nerves on the bottom of our foot. There's only one pressure point at the bottom of our foot. Um, and it's called, the Chinese call it a bubbling well, all right? So where it is, is my toes here, my ball of my foot's here, the arch is here. It's behind your second toe, which for some people is their long toe, but not everybody. If you follow that toe back past the ball of the foot, but before the arch, there's a tender spot on your foot between the arch and the ball of the foot. There's a tender spot about right there on your foot and that's called the bubbling well. And that's the part that you wanna root. And that's the part I was, that's the top of the bubbling well is here. So the bottom is with that pressure point on my foot. You push that pressure point down and you'll feel more stability. This will also help my Parkinson's friends. Sometimes when you feel unstable and the foot starts coming up, you push down on the bubbling well and bend your knees and that's gonna help you stabilize yourself, okay? Um, so that's one of the pressure points you wanna root. And even as I'm standing here in the Wuji position, I'm rooting the bubbling well down to the ground. And that's help keeping me stable, okay? So you can, yeah, you really can. Um, in, in some areas of Chinese, they call it a nail uh, because you feel like your foot's been nailed to the ground almost, right? Um, but what you wanna try and do is like right now I have both points, both bubbling wells uh, rooted to the ground. So I release the one on this side, go to this foot, step out with this foot, attach the bubbling well, and then shift the weight and release this one. And then attach this one and release this one. And attach this one and release this one. And that's how you can walk and you can stay very stable when you walk and it helps with foot freezing also. Um, I recommend with uh, foot freezing to to just stop. Don't it doesn't matter who's behind you. It doesn't matter if you're holding them up. Guess what? They should have left earlier, right? <laughs> um, but if your foot's freezing, uh, don't try and make your foot move. Just stop. Feel that center. Feel the bubbling well, and then go. Okay, release this one. Attach this one. Attach this one. Release this one. Attach this and release this. That's the best way. Don't try and push a bad position. Your, your feet are freezing and you're like, I, I gotta get moving, this person's behind me and they're upset or whatever, it doesn't matter. Because um, I see a lot of my friends with Parkinson's, with foot freezing, will start to lean forward to try and get their foot to do this, to catch themselves. Well, the problem is if your foot doesn't catch yourself, you're in trouble because you're falling down, right? So instead, when you're starting to feel the foot freeze, come back to a neutral position root that nail to the ground, that bubbling well, and then start walking from there. 
makes it a lot easier, okay? So, because I know some of you deal with foot freezing, just slow down, root the feet to the ground, okay? All right, by the way, uh, bubbling well is your kidney meridian, kidney one it's known as in acupuncture terms, okay? All right, so let's have a seat. Let's do some meditation. I'm going to have to see what that mindfulness workshop's all about. So I'm going to turn off the overhead light. Pardon me? Yeah, there you go. Holy, weren't you just going to, oh, you were complaining about being too cold. I guess you would want a fire then, would you? Let me get a drink of water real fast. Um, so, Tai Chi is mindfulness also teaching you meditation, even more mindfulness. I got a little sidetracked by talking about our feet and on the ground in that uh, pressure point, but it makes a difference. It makes a difference in how we move around. If you have foot freezing, you root that point to the ground. Um, so the other thing you can do, and since we only have a few minutes here, you can do like a little short meditation. Now, if you practice a longer meditation, you'll be able to get into a meditative mind easier. Okay, but it takes that practice. It takes long practice, just as if you wanted to be a runner, you would go run a long distance, right? You'd run like eight miles, so you could race for two miles. So it's kind of the same thing. If you want to meditate for a couple minutes, you can do that, but only after you've meditated for a longer period of time and get your mind in that meditative state. And then you can meditate for two minutes and help calm yourself down. Um, it really does help. It helps with nervousness. It helps with anxiousness. Um, it helps with anger issues. And I know a lot of people who have Parkinson's, and my mother was one of them. She had, ang uh, she had a lot of anxiety. Um, it didn't manifest itself physically. Her Parkinson's manifested itself in her anxiety that she would take. Okay? Um, so uh, it, was, it, was, it was a good thing to be... Uh, when I started sharing a little bit about meditation with my mother, okay? So, <clears throat> we're just going to do a real simple meditation. I want you to breathe in, breathe in all that good life energy, and as you breathe out, imagine that uh, like a shower is washing. Imagine like you're standing under a waterfall, and water is pouring over your head, and it's taking your stress and just washing it away from you, okay? All right. So we're sitting up nice and straight and tall, feet flat on the floor, heads lifted by the silk thread. Use the back of your chair if you need to. I want you to worry, I, uh, I want you to think about your meditation, not about how I'm sitting and if I'm sitting right, all right? So big deep breath in, closing our eyes, we breathe out and remove any thoughts from our mind. So we're not thinking about what happened before this morning what could happen this afternoon, we're staying in the present time. Inhale, fill the lungs with air. And as we exhale, remove the thoughts from your mind. So you're staying in the here and now, you're focusing on your breathing. That's mindfulness, all right? One more time, inhale. And exhale, let those thoughts just escape from your mind. So now I'm in the here and now, I'm present. So take a long, slow, deep breath in. And as we're breathing out, imagine you're under that waterfall. It's washing all of your anxiety, all of your anger, all of your nervousness away. Let's do that again, big, deep belly breath in. And as we breathe out, letting that anger go, letting that anxiety fade away, letting it wash away from us. Big, deep belly breath in. And breathing out, letting the anxiety go, letting the nervousness go. Just letting it escape from my body, let it float away. You don't need it anymore. Big, deep belly breath in. And then we breathe out, letting our anxiety go. 
letting that nervousness go. Let's do it again, big deep, belly breath in. And breathing out, let our body relax, let our mind relax. Let's do it one more time. Big, deep belly breath in. And then we breathe out, letting that mind relax, letting our body relax. Let that water take our worries and our cares away. Beautiful. Wow. Look at how relaxed you guys are. I'm not seeing any tremors right now. That's a beautiful thing. And that was a short meditation. Ooh, maybe I should do that one more often. All right. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, you end up wet. That's true, but that's all right. Um, yeah, you can think of, like, you know, I used to, um, so I was working a really high stress job when the girls were really young and I used to do, and I heard that it worked and it actually did, um, that I came in as like, you know, my, my young girls, they don't need to know how hard work is. They don't care. They're just happy to see daddy. Right. And so I used to, um, get out of the car and I would physically walk to a tree in our front yard and. Somebody said, you hang your troubles on the tree and you pick them up in the morning. And that's what I'd do. I'd be like, you know, this was bad with work or this was bad with work. It didn't matter. I'd hang those troubles on the tree and, and they stayed outside with the tree. And it was like, now it's my time to be a father. And so I went inside and I was a father. Um, and when I got up for work the next day, guess what? All those troubles were still there. And none of them were, but I didn't think about them the whole time I was in the house. Um, and it made a difference, even though, you know, really the trouble stayed with me, right? They weren't really on the tree. Um, but that symbolic act of putting them on the tree to pick them up later when I came back out made a huge difference, made a huge difference. I'd like to think it did anyway. And so standing under the shower, maybe you take a shower every morning. Um, maybe you take a shower every night. If you take a shower in the morning, it's like, you know, I'm letting it wash my troubles away. I'm going to start this day. This is a brand new day. I've been given the gift of this new day, and I'm going to use this day for good. Or if you take it at night, go, all the troubles of the day washed away. I start tomorrow brand new. Um, and one thing I heard when you heard me talk, you're like, we're clearing our mind of thoughts that we don't think about what happened in the morning, what could happen in the afternoon. We stay present in the here and now. That literally is a present. And you guys know this, I had it rung into stark clarity with me when I had my surgery, that every day is a gift. Every day is a present. And maybe that's what presence means, is you're, you're given a gift of another day uh, to make a difference in the world. Um, and that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all, right? So go forth, make, make your gift wonderful, right? <laughs> all right, thank you. All right. Have a good week. I will see you in two weeks. Tom will be here next week, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, it's called the bubbling well or kidney one. <laughs> kidney one. I know it sounds strange to be part of the kidney, but it's part of the, it's the kidney meridian at the very, get, what they call a gateway point. So root that foot to your ground. Yeah. Not, can't do it yet. You'll get there. You'll get there. All right. Good job. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good questions.